Santa. And I found the item to use to wipe them clean in the nurse's office trash can. I got it! It was a glasses cleaning cloth featuring a certain cartoon mascot. One look at the blood stain on the cloth should make things clear. This piece of cloth was used to wipe Kifumi's glasses clean. And the mascot on the cloth is the same one that's on the digital camera, right? And whose digital camera was it? Kifumi's, of course. The character was... Princess Piggles. From Demon Angel Pretty Puggy Princess, I think. I highly doubt anyone but Kifumi would have brought something like this to school. I see your point. And the only people here who wear glasses are... I wouldn't be caught dead using a tacky piece of garbage like that. A few tissues is all I need to keep my glasses clean. Then there's no question. It belongs to Hifumi. Hmm. Hmm. So what you're saying is... What exactly? What I'm saying is, the blood on his glasses was wiped away using his own glasses cleaning cloth. Even if that is true, it does not mean he wipes the blood off himself. But who would benefit from a clean pair of glasses, other than the glasses owner? That's a good point. Then it must have been him, right? So let's assume that Hifumi was still alive in the nurse's office. He pretends to be dead. Then when he's alone, he wipes his glasses clean so he can see. Then he stands up and walks out on his own two feet. And with that, the impossible task of moving his copious corpse becomes possible, wouldn't you say? But then, if he was just pretending to be dead... What was with all that blood? Was it paint or something? The fridge in the nurse's office contains packs of blood for emergencies. He probably used one of those. He figured if he was gonna play dead, he should go all out! So he just dumped it everywhere! But he got crazy with it and had to wipe his glasses off when he was done! And if Hifumi was still alive at that point, the disappearance of Taka's body is easily explained. It should be perfectly obvious who must have moved Taka's corpse. I got it! It could only have been Hifumi. While we were all gathered in the nurse's office, he went to the equipment room and took Taka's body. That also explains how the door to the repository got locked. The door was locked? Well... After the bodies disappeared, we all went looking for them, right? So me and Sakura headed for the repository. But when we got there, the door was locked. And the repository door can only be locked from the inside. Which means, when Hina and Sakura got to the repository, someone was already inside. And it could only have been Hifumi, who just finished stashing Taka's body there. He convinced us all he was dead. And when he saw his chance, he dragged Taka's body to the repository. So, Hifumi wasn't just another victim in this case. He was one of the assailants. But that means he took part in the murders. I just can't believe it. 
If you're having trouble, would you like me to show you one more piece of evidence? There's more? Oh, absolutely. The single biggest fact pointing to his involvement has yet to be revealed. You know what I'm talking about, right Makoto? The item he took off of Taka's lifeless body? I got it! You're talking about the note Hifumi had hidden away, aren't you? Hidden note? That's right. We found it stuffed in his pants. What? In his... Pants? Mm. Yes, his pants. Okay, well, forget about the pants for now. Take a look at what the note says. That's the note I was telling you about. The one that told me where to go. Huh? Wait, this one's a little different. In my note it said, Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. see. Then this note isn't the same one Hiro got. It's not the same? In other words, the killer got in touch with another person besides Hiro. And that person could only have been... A gun! That's right! Taka! The killer used this note to draw out Taka and murder him. Hello! Over here! Objection! Objection! I don't really understand what's going on, but Hifumi had that letter, right? So whoever wrote it wasn't drawing out TikTok, they were drawing out Huffy! Um, just to be clear, TikTok is Taka and Huffy is Hifumi, right? Oh, yes! Why must you ruin it every time? But remember what the note said. What time did it say to me? 6 a.m. I believe. The time doesn't matter! The note has nothing to do with TikTok! No, it's wrong! No! There absolutely is a connection! What? What the hell are you talking about? The note said to meet at 6 a.m., which is the same time Taka was murdered. You've already proven that using his wristwatch. But there's more. Look where the note says to meet. The equipment room, right? Which is where Taka was killed. I see. So, Taka was murdered at both the time and place written in the note. I think that should be plenty to show that this note was definitely meant for Taka. Hmm. Well, when you put it like that... No further objections! <laughs> then someone used that note to trick Taka. Just the same as me. <sighs> the culprit really is a cold-blooded monster. Telling people they found a way out. But if they gave the note to Taka, what was Hifumi doing with it? Shut down his pants, no less! Most likely. Hifumi stole it off Taka's corpse after he died. Huh? He stole it? Where's your proof? Go ahead, show us. I got it! When I searched Taka's body, I saw that his lifeless hand was gripping a small scrap of paper. If I'm right about this, the sheet of paper this piece came from is... I knew it! It fits perfectly with the note we found hidden on Hifumi! Then Taka's scrap and Hifumi's note... Yup, they're from the same piece of paper. Hifumi had the note meant for Taka, while Taka's corpse still grasped a small piece of that note. There is only one way to explain it. Taka died clutching the note. 
Ifumi tried to free the note from his death grip, leaving behind only one small scrap. Did I get all that right? That means Ifumi knew the note was important. Exactly. Which proves that he was an accomplice in the murder. Whoa. Yeah. After seeing all this, Ifumi was super involved in this whole thing for sure. In fact, he was behind the whole thing. In fact, he's still alive! Sorry, no. When we found him in the repository, Ifumi was truly and completely dead. The second body discovery announcement proves that. So then, who killed Ifumi? Whoever did is the mastermind, the true killer. He was killed in the repository. So he must have been killed not long after transporting Taka's body. So he must have been killed after Taka's body vanished, but before we found both bodies in the repository. During that time, we'd all split up and were searching for Taka's missing body. In other words, during that time, none of us have alibis. Wait! But me and Sakura were together! Stop trying to steal the spotlight, you stupid walrus! Who are you calling a walrus? Anyway, when they were killed bothers me too. But there's something that's been bothering me even more. And what might that be? The weapon they used to kill Hifumi! The weapon? Yeah, because I mean, according to the Monokuma file, the way Taka and Hifumi were killed was almost the same, with them having similar fractures and all. But Justice Hammer 3 and 4 were still laying around in the nurse's office and equipment room, right? So if Hifumi was killed in the repository, the culprit would have had to grab one of the hammers, kill Hifumi, then put the hammer back where they found it. But wouldn't that be seriously risky for him? I'm surprised. It seems there's some semblance of a brain knocking around that skull of yours after all. Hell yeah! It's packed in there good and tight. He's right, though. I don't understand it either. The Monokuma file makes it clear that they were killed using similar instruments. But if the hammers were already laying around those other rooms... So the question is, how could the culprit have gotten their hands on either of the hammers? Personally, I haven't a clue. So which hammer was used to attack Celeste? Number one or number two? Those were accounted for in other rooms too. And I don't think either one is big enough to kill someone. Um... Then... Uh... Is it not possible they used a different weapon? I don't think it is possible. They were both killed with the same kind of thing, right? So then, what was used to kill Hifumi? What was used to kill Hifumi? Was it Justice Hammer 3? Maybe Justice Hammer 4? Well, whatever it was, there's one thing we have to figure out. How was the culprit able to move around so freely with the weapon? How did nobody witness them carrying it? Sounds like a Justice Hammer 5 is about to make its appearance! Check out MurderGear.com slash HammerTime for more info! Well, one thing seems pretty clear. The murder weapon had to be one of the Justice Hammers! No, it's wrong! The murder weapon wasn't a Justice Hammer at all. No, it was something completely different. But, seriously? A different weapon? Specifically, a hammer from the repository. The killer could have easily used that to kill Hifumi. Now, all the hammers in the repository were covered in flecks of grit and debris. But for some reason, one of them had been scrubbed clean. Huh? And the reason it had been scrubbed clean was most likely because it was used to commit murder. If the hammer got covered in Hifumi's blood, of course they'd have to clean it off. I'd also like to point out that the repository has all kinds of hammers. Big ones, 
small ones, and even some flat mallet-like ones. I think whoever made the Justice Hammers used those as a basis for their design. If that's true, that would explain the Monokuma Files' note about the wounds being similar. So Hifumi moved Taka's body to the repository, where someone then used a hammer to kill him. And whoever did that is the true killer. The one Hifumi was working with. And the one who betrayed him. Hold on a moment. I still think it's strange to assume someone was working together with him. The way the graduation rule works, there is no benefit to helping someone else carry out a murder. So the idea that anyone would work together like that is simply ludicrous. We talked about this, did we not? Based on the rules that have been laid out for us, even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate and survive. Assuming the rule holds true, it is simply impossible that two people work together on this. That is how the rule was explained to us. But that only really applies if there's one murder, right? In this case, however, there were two murders. Based on the rules that have been laid out for us, even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, only the one who actually assuming the rule holds true. It is simply impossible. No, it's wrong. Since there were two murders, it's at least plausible that more than one person was involved. What do you mean? If there'd only been one murder, then yes, the idea of an accomplice isn't really worth considering. Naturally, if only one person can be saved per murder, an accomplice has no risk versus reward benefit. Risk versus reward benefit? The payoff for working together. The reward that balances out the risk of taking part in a scheme. There's no point in being someone's accomplice if there's no benefit to you. However, if there were some potential mutual reward for the risk, then cooperation becomes possible. You're saying that two people could act as each other's accomplices to commit two separate murders. I think that's what the true killer told Hifumi. They would each have an accomplice for their crime. And based on the case's events, Hifumi would have been the first one to act, murdering Taka. They made him carry out the first murder so he couldn't back out of helping them later on. So in this case, there wasn't one single person committing multiple murders. Instead, each person killed someone, creating two separate incidents. And it only looked like one person because that's how the true killer designed it to look. A single suspicious individual, a similar weapon used in each crime, disappearing bodies. By creating one seamless set of circumstances, they made it look like one person was behind it all. The mastermind picked their target and managed to convince him to go along with their plan. And then, to avoid the no accomplices rule, they simply killed their accomplice. Which, if true, means that betraying Hifumi was part of the plan from the very beginning. That, that's just awful! How could anyone be so cruel? You think so? I can't help but admire its cunning. Still, their choice of accomplice seems... odd. could be involved. But then, who was the one pulling Hifumi's strings? That's problem numero uno right now! Here's my 
my answer. It was Celeste. Ah, so I'm the suspicious individual now, am I? <laughs> I really do hate this kind of joke. A joke? I wonder. So what you are saying, then, is that I specifically chose to work together with Hifumi. The idea that I would choose to spend any amount of time interacting with him, that I would go within ten feet of that shit from brains, that lazy, worthless, goddamn idiot! Uh, 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 pardon moi. Just to be clear, there is evidence to support it. Is that so? It is. Throughout the investigation, there was certain behavior that was common only to the two of you. Considering what we've learned so far, it only further proves that the two of you were working together. I got it! The behavior they had in common has to do with the suspicious individual in the suit, doesn't it? The only ones who ever actually saw Robo-Justice firsthand were Celeste and Hifumi. Shush, the adults are talking now. Sorry. As he said, only Celeste and Hifumi ever laid eyes on the costumed individual. If we accept that Hifumi was one of the culprits, we can't help but suspect what Celeste has said as well. Are you saying everything they told us was a lie? After taking Hifumi to the nurse's office, we all began our search for this individual, correct? And not too long after that, do you remember what Celeste said? We headed to the second floor specifically because of what she claimed to have seen. Next, to draw us all to the physics lab up on the third floor, she let out a blood-curdling scream. And when we'd all come to see what was wrong, what was it she said? Once she'd done her job of getting us all up to the physics lab, it was time for her partner to get to work. It was to get us to divide into two groups. So that we would discover both bodies at the same time? In fact, Celeste was precisely the one who proposed that we split up. Well, if Celeste and Hifumi were working together, all those chance events suddenly become connected. And on top of that, that piercing cry of yours early on. <laughs> that was to signal Hifumi, wasn't it? It was your way of telling him, we're on the third floor, everything's going according to plan. Why else would you let out a scream that could have carried across the sea? I just realized another strange thing. When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, who we now know was only pretending to be dead. Celeste. You were the first one to say he'd been murdered. You wanted to make sure we wouldn't have any doubt in our minds. I, I don't believe it! Everything, the whole thing was one big act! Hina, you were with Celeste when Hifumi's body disappeared, right? Yeah. I was feeling kind of sick, so Celeste took me to the bathroom. 
Wait, then that was... She wasn't worried about you. She just saw a chance to help Hifumi sneak out of the nurse's office. Each piece isn't much by itself, but start putting them together and the picture gets very ugly indeed. Wouldn't you agree, Celeste? I have no idea what you mean. Don't bother trying to deny it. You made one fatal mistake. Oh, did I? I didn't even catch it myself when you first said it, but looking back, I can say that that one little slip-up was your undoing. What are you talking about? I'm talking about what you said after Hifumi's body disappeared and we returned to the nurse's office. saying that too, but I don't understand what's so strange about it. Then pay attention. Sakura, Toko, and I were first to discover Taka's body in the equipment room. Then Makoto showed up and told us Hifumi had been killed. So Sakura and I left with Makoto. Once we were in the hall, we ran into Celeste, and the four of us headed to the nurse's office. Now, the entire time we were together, none of us said anything about Taka being dead. Think about it. Celeste's comment doesn't make sense. It was completely out of place. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. Although I don't really get what it means. You hear that, Celeste? Everyone's having some trouble understanding. Could you repeat what you said? If you're really not the culprit, you shouldn't have any problem repeating it, right? Was. They must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. They must be positively elated. We are all going to die here. We are going to die, just like those guys died. And that is all I said. And that's all it takes to finish this. It's obvious, isn't it? What was so strange about Celeste's comment? Oh. What I said was, they must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around. They must be positively ill. We are all going to die here. We are going to die. Just like those guys died. All I said, they must really enjoy the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. They must be positively you. We are all going to die here. We are going to die. Just like those guys died. Shoot! All I said, they must really enjoy the sight of us. They must be We are all going to die here. We are going to die. Just like those guys and that is a And that's all it takes. What was so strange about Celeste's comment? All I said, they must really enjoy the sight of us. They must be We are all going to die. We are going to die. Just like those guys died. Shoot! All I said, they must really enjoy the sight of us. They must be We are all going to We are going to die. And that is a And that's all it takes. What was so strange about Celeste's comment? All I said, they must really enjoy the sight of us. They must be We are all going to die. We are going to die. Just like No, it's wrong. That's right. There's no reason Celeste should have said, just like those guys died. When she said that, none of us had told her Taka was dead. Exactly. 
and we didn't run into her until after we were all out in the hall. So there was never any chance for her to have seen his body in the equipment room for herself. So how did you know, Celeste? How did you know more than one person had been killed? And how did you know they were both guys? Because Kyoko had also disappeared, right? So she could have been dead too. have such vivid imaginations, you know that? Imaginations? You claim that I was lying when I told you about the suspicious person I saw. Then what about the picture I took? How do you explain this picture of the costumed villain dragging Hifumi away? It, it has to be some kind of setup, right? So let's put the suit on, and then, then she used the camera's timer to... To set up the picture! Have you so quickly forgotten? You are the only one who could have possibly fit into that suit! Plus, I happen to know that this particular camera does not have a timer. In other words, it is an unassailable fact that this is a picture of Hifumi being dragged away. If everything I told you was a lie, how can this picture exist? Simple. Are we sure that's really a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away? What could you possibly mean by that? Surely there are other explanations than the one you've offered up. No, there is no other explanation. It's not a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away. I would say it's a picture of Hifumi dragging the suspect away. That's certainly within the realm of possibility. The one being dragged off in that picture isn't Hifumi, but the person in the robot suit. We've simply been led to believe that it's the other way around. And the strange costume might only exist to lead us astray even farther. If you saw someone wearing something like that in this situation, of course you'd notice and be suspicious. That's what happened! You put me to sleep and made me out to be the bad guy in all this! <laughs> Such a thing is utterly impossible. Hifumi was dragging him away? Ridiculous, is it? I don't think it's ridiculous at all. Then shut your mouth and allow me to educate you. You dressed me up in that suit after I passed out! Then you just draped me across Hifumi and had him carry my weight! You tried to make me look like a bad guy! Like I said, ridiculous! As you can see in the picture, the suspect is standing perfectly upright. If the person inside the suit was unconscious, there's no way they could stand up straight like that. Then the fortune telling it Get away! You dressed me up in that, then you just dreamed it. You tried to make me look like I said, as you can see in the picture. If the person inside the suit was a, there's no way they could stand up straight. No, it's wrong. No, even if the person inside the suit were unconscious, they could still stand up like that because that Robo Justice suit had a certain characteristic. totally made a mistake when they made it, so it couldn't bend at the waist. I'm not so sure that was a mistake. I think the suit was designed from the beginning to be used the way it was. Celeste and Hifumi took the suit they'd specially designed and stuffed Hiro into it. That's how they were able to fake that whole thing. The point of it all was to make us believe whoever was in the suit was to blame. 
<laughs> well then, I suppose this is checkmate. Checkmate? <laughs> Don't make me laugh, you idiot! What do you mean, checkmate? Celeste? Clearly, you want to cram me into your little guilty box. Well, there's one little problem. Have you already forgotten what Hifumi told us as he lay dying? Confusing statements don't make any sense. You're only making things more complicated. He did say Yasuhiro, but are we sure he was really pointing the finger at Hiro? What the hell are you talking about? I'll burn you alive! Kyoko, what do you mean by that? Think back to how Hifumi used to talk to us. How did he refer to each of us? I got it! That's right! Our last names! He called us all by our last names! Exactly. I know I heard him say Mr. Nayagi more than once, for example. So if Hifumi did mean to say Hiro's name, he would have said his last name, Hagakure. I'm sure it was just... incidental. By chance, he just... his... first name... indecent? Don't talk. Random chance. Now isn't that a convenient explanation? No, there's no reason to think he would have said the name any different than normal. But he must have run out of energy before he could say any more. So Hifumi was trying to tell us the last name of whoever killed him? But the name he said doesn't apply to anyone here. Well, no. Hold on. There's one person it could apply to. And that's Celeste. She never actually told us what her real name is. What did you just say? To think you'd take your false accusation so far, I don't know whether to laugh or spit. Come on! Enough with your idiotic blather. Yasuhiro is a loser's name. Do I look like a loser to you? Well, do I? What? I think I've earned the right to be a little on edge. Okay, then fill us in. What's your real name? Make sure your ear holes are wide open and listen up! My real name is Celestia Ludenberg. Could you please stop making me repeat myself over and over again? Hifumi was trying to tell us something. He wanted us to know the killer's last name, Yasuhiro. If there's one person here who might have that last name... It would have to be you, Celeste. You haven't told anyone what your real name is. How many times do I have to tell you? My name is... Celestia Ludenberg, God damn it! How long do you plan to go on pretending? I'm not pretending. It's the truth. And since you have no way to contradict me... No, that's wrong! That's it! The handbook! What?! Anytime you turn your handbook on, it shows the owner's name when it boots up, right? Monokuma told us all about it before.
So all we have to do is check her handbook, and that'll clear up everything. That's how we can find out Celeste's real name. That, that's an invasion of privacy. I, I refuse to cooperate. Celeste, can you please just tell us what really happened? Please, just tell us. Even when I'm put in check, it's just my nature not to give up. Because, 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 because! Until the game's over, you never know what might happen! Fine then. Let me settle it. Let me go over the case again, from the beginning, and shed light on all your crimes. And that'll bring everything to an end.
exactly what happened. Before anything, the killer persuaded someone to help carry out the murder. And that person was... Ifumi. With an accomplice, the killer was able to execute a number of otherwise impossible schemes. What happened? First, they convinced someone to meet them in the rec room last night at one in the morning. That someone they met with was Hero. The murderous duo intended to pass Hero off as the prime suspect. So when they met up with him, they drugged him, knocked him out, and stuffed him into the Robo-Justice suit. Next, he firmly positioned himself to make it look like Robo-Justice was attacking him, while the killer used a digital camera to take pictures of the assault. They did all this just to create evidence that would put the suspicion on Hero. When they were done with him, they shoved him, still unconscious, into the pool room locker. And then finally, at 6 a.m., they moved into the murder phase of their plan. They called Taka to the equipment room. And that's where Kifumi killed him, making it the scene of the first murder. The murder weapon was Justice Hammer 4, which was left there in the equipment room. The reason Hammer Number 4 was used was to create confusion about the order of the crimes. So, next they falsified two more assault incidents. For these attacks, the killers pretended to be the victims to solidify Robo-Justice as the suspect. The first fake incident was the attack in the rec room. There, the killers wanted us to see Justice Hammer 1 and the Robo-Justice pictures they'd taken. They wanted to make sure we bought the surprise attack story. The second fake incident was the attack in the library. This time, they planted Justice Hammer 2 and an injured Yifumi to sell us that story. With these two incidents, the killers were able to create a certain preconception in our minds. That the suspect was increasing the size of the hammers and attacking people in order as they did. We fell right into their trap and started looking for the suspect based on that. But... While we did that, we left Hifumi alone in the nurse's office. This was exactly what Hifumi was hoping for. He took a blood packet from the refrigerator and Justice Hammer 3 and turned the room into a crime scene in which he himself had apparently been brutally murdered. He let out a scream to draw us back. And when we returned, that's what we found. Meanwhile, the other group that had been out searching found Taka's body at the same time. So when we heard the body discovery announcement, we naturally assumed it was for Hifumi. We left the nurse's office, and Hifumi once again took advantage of the situation. He simply got up and made his escape. When we learned his body had disappeared, we all rushed back to the nurse's office. And once again, Ifumi had the chance he was waiting for. This time, he snuck into the equipment room. He wrapped Taka's body in a tarp and used the dolly to move it all the way down to the repository. That explains how each of the bodies disappeared. But even Ifumi didn't know what the true killer had in mind for their final act. Their plan all along was to kill Hifumi and get rid of the one person who could betray them. And they did it using an ordinary, everyday hammer from the repository. That should cover everything that happened in this case. And the villain behind it all is...
Celeste! Sorry, you lose! <laughs>